Season 3 is here. Guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Career Mode. And today, Season 3 begins and there's some big changes in store. Not many, but the ones that have happened are big. And if you guys missed Season 2 or the last episode, go click on the card in the top right-hand corner, guys, on the link down below to go watch it before we jump into any spoilers for Season 3. If you have missed Abu Dhabi, watch the video now, guys. But for this weekend, we've got nice, sunny, dry conditions. But that, not, that isn't the biggest news of the winter because, yeah, R Ricardo is my new teammate. Sebastian Vettel has gone. He's switched with Ricardo. They've literally swapped places. Those are the only two transfers over the winter. But my goodness me, are they big. Sebastian Vettel to Renault. Ricardo's going to be my new teammate. And not just that, Sebastian Vettel's made a big, big call. And you can see on screen right now, our investment over the winter's paid off three major engine upgrades and an ultimate chassis one on our car to kick things off this season. And we are going to re-overtake Racing Point and we're going to go back to being the seventh quickest team. We have made the best development over the winter alongside Renault. And if you guys can run the numbers, Hamilton's in Red Bull, Vettel's in Renault. Those two are the top two teams, so you know exactly what's about to go down. It's going to be Hamilton versus Vettel once again in this season, I think. But in other news, my new helmet for this season, guys, you can see on screen, taking inspiration from my hero, Michael Schumacher. And the towards the end of his Ferrari days, he actually pretty much his helmet turned into an all-red version of the helmet, including that where the sponsors are. And I've pretty much replicated that as best as, best as I can with a couple of changes here and there with my logo, of course, and the update sponsors and also a few metallic details instead of gloss paint metallic paint like for example on, on the helmet where the T is a um, little darker kind of details and also along the side of the helmet which you can't quite see uh, but overall keeping it very simple and taking inspiration from one of the greatest of all time in uh, what will be my final season for Ferrari guys now what happens this season I'll be leaving Ferrari for season four and the target for me this year is very simple to win the championship because that's my mission that's what I set out to do and in two seasons so far we've won the constructors we did it in season one but we're yet to win the drivers championship so I want to try and do that this season we are quite a way down in the R&D performance graph but hopefully we can try and out develop teams this season and really make a big big push towards the front and the practice was very good we scored pretty much maximum points 315 I believe out of 320 25 and it was a positive practice session to carry into the right into the qualifying sorry and um, i felt confident after practice it was very close but actually after the qualifying simulations we actually were quicker than ricardo by about three tenths and i was only half a second off the red bull so i felt relatively confident that i could have a pretty good qualifying session and a good weekend so uh i'm looking forward to it and hopefully we get stuck in and see what our pace is like and see if we can have a decent weekend there is the new man in the ferrari daniel ricardo the new number three prancing halls in the other side of the garage along with the brand new 90th anniversary sponsorship as we saw for the first time in Abu Dhabi so yeah let's jump into it and let's get into this first qualifying session of the season here in season three straight away in Q1 my first run in this session you can see here three tenths off Faber in sector one and now coming towards the end of sector two which is not too complex very fairly, fairly straightforward we actually drop quite a bit of time and we lose six tenths in sector two which was quite surprising because in practice sectors one and two are fine my weak point was sector three and uh, in Q1, for some reason, I lost six tenths to Weber, and I don't know why I lost that much in Sector 2, unless maybe the AIs have their engine turn up. Either way, we're going to have to try and pull out a, a special funnel sector here to keep this up together, because uh, that was not my plan. And that second sector has kind of ruined my um, expectation of potentially getting through to Q2 with one run. As we cross the line, we are going to go P12, 1.5 off the pace, so we lose a further six tenths in the final sector. That's a bit more normal. But uh, yeah, we're going to go again. Basically, I went for a cooldown lap and I stayed on track with the same tyres and the same fuel. And I went again, but I encountered traffic here in the form of McLaren, which kind of got in my way and just ruined my run. And I made a mistake as a consequence in turn two. And we've only got six minutes left, but I took the chance and decided to not go for another run and use another set of tyres. And luckily for me, the gabble paid off. It was quite comfortable, even though it was P12. We had about half a second in our pocket and we still managed to go through with three tenths in our pocket, albeit in P15, uh, re re relatively comfortably as the racing points, the Alphas and the Toro Rosas are quite away off our pace. But now in Q2, this was my best lap of the session. So let's stay on board with this one for the entire way through. Straight away, turn one, very, very wide at turn one, not really getting enough of that curb. And this is going to be an example of what you don't want to do in qualifying. This was a very, very messy lap from me. 
and uh, you'll see why in a moment I'm showing you this entire lap. But straight away, bar turn one, it's been okay so far. Um, no real major mistakes. I, I personally, I'd like to go off that curb on the inside there for the right-hander, but now this is when the mistakes happen. We take a big chunk out of that right-hander, and I really thought about abandoning my lap time because that was a big corner cut, and also for some reason, we strict corner cutting. I didn't get a warning. As we now go into the next right here, hitting the apex beautifully, and actually struggling to get the power there. Huge bit of oversteer on the exit as a consequence. And at this point, between those two mistakes, I kind of accepted this app was going to be trash as they were 1.7 off the pace. And uh, it's actually Perez setting the pace in the Renault. You know, the Renault, of course, they are quicker than Red Bull, so it's to be expected they are quicker than them around here. As we now go in towards the end of the final sector and try and, just trying to keep the lap together at this point and uh, try not to make any further mistakes as we throw the car into a couple of rights and now into the penultimate corner here for the left hander. And I get it completely wrong. No locking up, I just completely got the braking wrong and I ran very wide in the final corner I'm kind of drifting through and overall a miserable lap here really really poor effort and it was my best lap in Q2 and unfortunately only P15 then Ricardo P14 he had a pretty poor lap himself and the reason I say that was my best lap is because my final run didn't go according to plan I uh, kept the setup the same I made a small tweak to the brake bias moving it from 58 down to 56 to try and avoid some front locking and to see if I could brake later on the brakes and it backfired on me straight away in turn three as we got on the brakes back end came round and yeah that's about it for the lap to be honest unfortunately I managed to save it not goes for the full spin but yeah that ruined it for me and uh, unfortunately that very scruffy first lap is going to be the one that we're going to have to sit with and unfortunately as expected it was P15 and last in Q2 disappointing really and a very scruffy qualifying session as a whole you know with the crash in Q1 and uh, just getting through in P15 really strange because in practice we was fourth after FP1 um, after the qualifying sims we was looking quick and I, I know we could have matched Ricardo's time I think you know I didn't really show my true potential so I know there's a lot of pace and a lot of um, pace to show with this car in the race even though we're the seventh quickest car the engine upgrades have made a big big difference to our car and uh, it does show and I'm hoping in the race we can prove that because I actually feel quite confident around here of getting a decent result but with that being said that is ever qualifying guys a very poor way to kick off season three again I qualified by my own teammate in my first race but with that being said that is it for the session we're now going to move into the race for round one of season three for the Australian Grand Prix They say that even a second is an eternity in Formula One, so going four winter months with no racing at all has seemed a very long time indeed. We're back though in Melbourne, home of the Australian Grand Prix since 1996. Just south of Melbourne's downtown business centre is the one and only Albert Park circuit. 3.3 miles of public roads, closed for the weekend of course, make for a bumpy circuit with little undulation. There are 16 corners around the lake and a couple of good passing opportunities here as well. Thanks in part to the DRS zones into turns 1, 3 and 13. I'm joined today in the commentary box as I will be throughout this season by a great racing driver. Former F1 competitor, former world champion and as he tells me all too often, an all-round top champ. It's the one and only Anthony Davidson. And tell me, here we are, first Grand Prix of the season, first time racing these cars. What are the big questions that need to be answered here, in your view? Oh, thanks, Crofty. It's a real privilege to be here, and I can't wait to see what's in store for us this season. Now, to answer your question, one of the biggest things is reliability. Formula One cars are full of very sophisticated, but also very sensitive technology. And this first Grand Prix of the season is going to push them to the limits. So the most important thing today is to stay out of trouble, get to the end of the race and keep everything in good condition. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. A fantastic effort from Pierre Gasly yesterday puts him on pole and Devon Butler lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Weber, Lewis Hamilton, and Vettel, Perez, Leclerc, Magnussen, and Kimi Raikkonen. Norris, Sainz, Valtteri Bottas, Martinez, Verstappen, Stroll, Alexander Albon, and Daniel Kvyat. Giovinazzi and George Russell ends our grid lineup. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay, so here we are then on the grid for the opening race in Australia. We start from P14 after a disappointing qualifying. Very, very messy. Not happy with it one bit. And, you know, overall, there wasn't much more that could have gone wrong, to be honest. You know, I, I was really not happy with that one. One of my worst qualities, I think, in a long, long time. Dare I say, 
maybe even on this entire game, you know, bar maybe Hungary last season where I crashed out in Q1, um, that was really scruffy, you know, really, really rare for me. But uh, yeah, we start from P14, someone got a penalty, so we've been promoted a little bit higher up the grid, and we start on row seven alongside a racing point. In terms of strategy, though, we're going to start on the medium tyres and go on to the softs. Originally, the game recommended this strategy the other way around, starting on the softs and going on to the mediums, but I want to try and have that advantage at the end of the race and uh, try and stay in the race as long as I can on the medium. Fuel wise, we're running one lap of extra fuel, and hopefully, the new power unit upgrades will help us out because our power unit is so much stronger than our error and our chassis now so that's going to really help us i think you know make the overtakes and also maybe stay in front of other cars and i think that's going to be the x factor with that being said though we're going to jump into it and see how we get on hopefully the mediums do the job and we're going to try our absolute best to try and get past as many cars as possible the target for me is a points finish i want to try and maybe get a top eight top six i think that's possible especially on this strategy so let's see how we get on and let's see if we can try and open our account in australia with a better race and try and improve on that miserable qualifying it's time for round one of season three for the australian grand prix Let's jump into it. Right, here we go then. Let's build up the revs, try and get a decent start here. Five lights are on, and five lights are out, and away we go for the Australian Grand Prix. Pretty decent start, to be fair. We'll take that. Down the inside of the Alfa Romeo at turn one, we're going to just put the squeeze and the snap in there. And the remaining P14 on the medium tyre seems like everybody around us is running the soft tyre. Down the inside of a couple of cars at turn three just trying to be aggressive Bottas does manage to hang on around the outside we do get past the McLaren though of Carlos Sainz battling going on in front of us here which is going to cause a bit of a separation already in the train of cars in front of us oh that was close a little bit of light contact there with Bottas front wing seemingly intact after that though which is good Sainz all over the back we're looking for a move here trying to go defensive I wasn't going to go for the move on Bottas just purely covering off Sainz from behind because uh He's looking very aggressive, very racy early on here. We're going to have to turn the engine up to overtake mode. Try and keep it behind Bottas. Meanwhile, having a look at Norris into the far chicane. Just trying to adapt to the, to the car here. Sainz getting the run. I'm going to shut the door on him again and uh, try and keep him behind. But Sainz being very aggressive in that McLaren, which is a faster car than the Ferrari. So to be expected, it will struggle initially on, on this tyre. Hopefully the race will come to us though in three or four laps time and uh, the pace will kind of even itself out. But for now, a decent opener. We made up one position on the first lap on the Sir tyre, which is good. ERS is far more efficient this season as well, which is also very good for us in terms of our race craft. Fuel will also be a lot more efficient as well, thanks to the engine upgrades over the winter. So we'll be a lot more competitive in terms of being able to defend that position and hold our own against the AI, but for sure it's going to be a big battle, a big ask. So let's just try and hang, it, hang in there for as long as we can before the soft start to fade a little bit and we start to come into our own. Pretty decent exit actually out of the chicane there. We uh, had a bit of a run on the racing point. A racing point pretty good on the straight still but it was good to see that we had a bit of a run on Bottas and uh, we can challenge. i just got to refocus here and try and hold my own. Lap two comes to an end and DRS will now be enabled on lap three. Signs is all over the back of me here. He's really trying to put me under pressure. DRS is now enabled and will be available to use when you are within one second of the car ahead in the DRS zone. Having to really use my rich mix here and also overtake mode and ERS to really stay in front of this McLaren. We're about the same pace as Bottas. The racing point, of course, is a slower car than ours, but the McLaren is quite quick. You can notice it. You can tell by the corners. It just has so much more grip. Ricardo's really gone backwards on this lap. He's been overtaken by multiple cars. Meanwhile, Sainz looking for a move again. Personal best from us. But uh, yeah, the true pace of the Ferrari Mercedes, you know, they started so high up the grid, but they're starting to drop through now as the fast cars in the form of Haas, Red Bull, and Renault make their way through. The pace is strong here. Personal best every single lap. I'm able to hold on with these medium tyres, but the AI is still hanging in there with their soft tyres. Sainz is definitely not putting me under as much pressure as he once was which could be a sign the salts are just starting to uh, let go a little bit. But this train in front is near impossible to get any kind of run on these guys. Ricardo leading the train at the minute. But again, the straight line speed in our car is quite good, so he's able to stay in front. But this train is pretty much impenetrable as uh, the DRS effect is too strong. Oh, McLaren off. That's Norris. 
and again it's the McLaren. Last season they were so unreliable. And Lando's out of the race in the open up. So we're up to P12 thanks to that. And uh, our first retirement is once again the McLaren. Lando Norris retiring in Australia. Meanwhile there's a big battle going on in front of us involved is our teammate Ricardo. But this is good for us. You know the longer we stay in this battle with these soft tire runners with our tire strategy we're going to have a real big chance at the end of the race to get past these guys. Also I feel like the overcut could be quite important here because these guys are going to be in a constant battle and also in a pit stop battle as well so we might get a big opportunity later on to overcut and also make some moves on the soft tyre so let's just hang in there we're doing a good race so far doing the job on the medium tyre and uh, the tyres just coming to us now a little bit as we start to get on top of this so it's looking good let's keep it going we've got the run on Bottas here Valtteri does go defensive we had a look around the outside but no way through multiple cars squabbling away in front of us here Bottas is slow down the inside very very slow they're very compromised we're going to try and compromise Valtteri's line through the final corner DRS open can we challenge him here he hasn't got much of a toe he's quite far back but look at that racing point go very good top end speed getting the run again through turn one a little bit of oversteer I can feel the back end kicking out but look at Bottas look at the speed of that racing point That was close, very close. Bottas there, completely turning in on me, even though I went for the move. I held my breath there, big time. Can't quite make a move just yet, but we are starting to get confident on these tyres now, and uh, the soft tyres are starting to fade on the guys in front. Ricardo's really strong for pace, though, I can't lie. Having said that, I'm not really surprised. You know, in practice, after the quality runs, the quality simulation runs, I was three tenths quicker than him in my quality run, so. I knew I had pace, I was only half second off the Red Bulls, you know, we had good quality pace, but it just didn't quite happen in qualifying, but my pace around here is actually pretty good, as uh, Ricardo's getting overtaken here by a Haas, it seems, we're going to lose a lot of time here, going side by side, it's going to put Bottas on the back foot again here, we're going to have a look, this time down the inside, I can't go too late on the brakes because of the Williams, but we are going to slip through, capitalising on the battles in front, and we make the move finally on Valtteri there, up to P11. Carlo do me a favour here as uh, we're now on the back of Raikkonen, a little bit of understeer and oversteer at the same time on entry and then on corner exit. Kimi going for a move on the Haas, doesn't quite work out. Into the far chicane, he does actually get the move on the Haas there. They're both going to be slow as a result. Here he goes, this is my chance to slip through here. Boxed in slightly but we're going to go down the inside of Kevin Magnussen who locks up. And there we go, we get past three cars in one lap. Soft tyres starting to fade now, struggle for grip. As we make a triple overtake, that's going to buy Ricardo some time as well. I feel like he might have damage maybe because he is dropping pace quite badly. But there we go then, up into the top 10. Good lap from us. P9 and medium tyres is what we're talking about. raikkonen has got the one me here. I'm going to have to go defensive and cover the inside. Just to show the Kimi the long way around. He's going to have the one me again down towards turn three, I think. So we're going to have to turn the engine up. But there we go, that's enough. Not able to stay in front. Let's see if we've got pace now on the crossover in terms of tyre performance to maybe try and have a little bit of a go at trying to pull away from the cars behind. Looks like Kimi pits in, along with a few others in the pit lane, Leclerc in there, also Weber as well. We advise moving to mix two, fuel to mix two. They are going for the hard tyres, so that's going to be a, a big indicator in terms of what they're going to run. If they do use the hards, we're going to have a huge advantage on the soft tyre at the end. Magnussen now behind us in the Haas, a much quicker Haas car. Magnussen pits in, Ricardo stays out for one more. We're starting to put the pressure on him now, and uh, starting to have better pace. The soft, soft tires are struggling as we get a good run through turn one. We're going to make the overtake here, make it nice and easy. Ricardo covers the inside. But we're going to take the inside one anyway, and there we go. Job done, getting past the teammate. He's obviously going to try and stretch out to run a medium tyre, which could be, again, you know, a game changer. A lot of people run the hard tyre in the final stint. Ricardo could get the jump on the mediums, which is good. Personal best first sector from us as we get on our way. The medium tyre still hanging in there. Good grip on these still. Also, we've got the Mercedes now in our sight. More cars in the pit lane. Daniel's in the pits. 
as we match our personal best. There's Lewis on medium, so unlike his teammate who went for the hards, Lewis going for the medium tyre. He's got a Renault right behind him, so that's going to be a quite a close battle. As we jump up the P3 in this race now. And the remaining two cars to pit in are in the pit lane. Sebastian Vettel, Pierre Gasly. And we're going to take first place for a little while. How long exactly, we'll find out. Lewis has already put me in the pressure here. I should be okay down towards turn three though. I shouldn't have to turn the engine up. I think I'll be okay. So we are going to need a portion of this race. Will it even surround to a lap? I guess we'll find out. But we are going to lead for a little while. Accidental double shift there. That's going to put Lewis on the back of me. He doesn't commit to the move though into the chicane. Which is better for me. Better for him. Nice clean run through the chicane there. That's going to buy me enough time to stay in front for now. I'm going to try and defend this because this will um, ultimately push me and my race pace to have strong pace in this tyre. Lewis looking for the move though, you can see the arrows so starting to queue up all over the back of me. A bit wide there, picking up some understeer, that's going to put Lewis easily past me, I'm not even going to fight that one. The Renault, look at the speed, Perez is going to just fly by, we're going to hang on though, we're going to try and hold on to the position but the Renault top end speed far too much and we can see the position up next my former teammate Sebastian Vettel who's moved on to pasture is new in the Renault he's going to start putting the pressure on my pace isn't miles off the leaders but it's quite a way off here comes Sebastian look at the difference of speed that Renault we're approaching the pit window you'll be on the soft an absolute beast in a straight line uh, Sebastian breezes past, literally walks past on the straight. Let's hang in there though, we've got a couple more laps to go on these tyres. Seb is setting the pace. It's about to become a three-way fight for the race win. Sebastian and Hamilton somehow are going to resume their battle from uh, lots of seasons gone by and completely different teams in the Renault and the Red Bull. With a bit of Perez sprinkled in between. Weber's on the hard tyre, so he's kind of out of sync and uh, out of position. He's the next car to catch me up, but I don't think he's going to catch me. I think I'll be okay to stay in front before the pit stops. I'm scheduled to pit in this lap. I'm going to stay out for one more. I'm on for a personal best and I've got decent pace still. And um, there's less risk of me having to run on worn soft tyres at the end of the race. I could be more competitive. So personal best. We're going to hang on at least for one more. We'll see how this lap goes. If this lap's good, I'll hang on for one more. I'm going to stay out for one more. We're on for another personal best. I will pit in this lap though. Lap 19, no matter what happens, as we just pick up another personal best. First in the best middle sector, but we're now going to pit in, turn the engine down, and uh, try and have a good final sector in a lower engine mode, and the lap strong, but these tyres have been very good, very consistent, now we're going to go for the quick tyre, the soft tyre, I should be able to pick up the extra point and uh, set the fastest lap of the race I think, I need to find two seconds, it also down, it's a 60 pit lane, very slow, but there we go, job done. A very good first in. Now we're going to go into the softs for pretty much qualifying laps. Complete. Go now. 1.9. Everyone's on hard tyres around us. This could be interesting. Like I said before, the overcut has paid big dividends in the past. It could do again. Here's both of the Mercedes. Can we come up behind Butler? That'd be great. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Look at this. We're going to come out behind the Mercedes cars just in front of Ricardo, and that is a fantastic overcut. Ricardo P9, I'm P8, I'm on soft tyres now. So 8th place, that overcut worked out to perfection. Now we're going to have a chance to pick up the purple lap and pick up the fast lap of the race. So we're going to charge everything up for the next lap, as that's going to be the one I'm going to absolutely go for it. But this race has got very tasty. 8th place, I think P6 is possible. Getting past both Mercedes is definitely realistic. So uh, let's get to work here and try and get past these silver arrows. I might struggle to do the purple lap here because I'm going to have to overtake Butler at some point. We pretty much burned off our excess fuel. We'll be back on target soon. Don't wait too long to turn the engine down. Some information on Russell. They have an issue with their car. They're going to be slow. I believe George Russell's behind us. We're going to have to uh, potentially sacrifice our purple lap here as we sit behind Devon Butler for at least a couple of corners. Unless they get the run here to the inside on the grass because I needed that inside line we do set the purple first sector I reckon I'll be okay to be fair I didn't lose too much ground 
Overall, a bit of a scruffy lap, but will it be enough to pick up the fast lap of the race? Let's find out up to the line. Yes, we do. 20.6. That's what I'm talking about. Good pace. Let's turn everything down now and save what we've got left to try and get past Pierre Gasly here. And to be fair, Leclerc is just up the road. I think P5 could be possible. Leclerc is on the hard tyres. So that is very doable, depending on how the soft tyre holds up. Right then, let's get ready for the pass on Gasly here. It's going to be out of the chicane, as you'd expect with the extra grip. We can easily go flat on the second half of the chicane. DRS open. We're going to turn the engine up. We're going to go to the outside. There we go, fantastic move. Little lock up, but that's okay. Kept down the control, and we go clean around the outside of Pierre. Up to sixth place. Now, can we catch up to Charles Leclerc in the house, just up the road? Let's give it a go. Front left is cooking. I can feel it through the final corner. I've got to try and take a little bit easier. Come off the pace a bit, give the front left a bit of a breather, and we'll try and attack Leclerc again. Because we're about eight tenths quicker a lap. But uh, with the tyres overheating, we're going to struggle to, to match that every single lap. Second track extension there, exact same corner again. Got to take it easy now. Can't afford to do that anymore. I think we're just going to have to set off a P6 in this race. Unfortunately, I could go a lot quicker than this, but it's going to cook my left front. And, um, you know, it, I can't do that because obviously it's not ideal to have an overheating tyre. So we're just going to take it easy and uh, just focus on bringing it home. P6 is still a good result, especially picking up the extra point for the fastest lap, so let's just focus on that. What I can hope for is a Leclerc mistake. Other than that, the gap's going to stay around 2.5 seconds as we uh, end this race. Yellow flag. Oh, there we go. I said it a lap ago. Leclerc breaks down, and we're going to slip through. Thank you very much. Reliability strikes again. Our car being super reliable, we've got no issues to worry about. But Leclerc retires along with Lando Norris in the opener here in Australia. Let's go, P5. Let's bring this one home. There we go then. Lewis Houghton wins the opener for Red Bull. He survives the pressure from both of the quicker Renaults and brings home the W for Red Bull Racing. Renault going to pick up a 2 and 3 with, I believe, Perez P2, Vettel P3 and then Weber the defending champion, only P4 on the hard tyre. A bit of a different strategy for him. Meanwhile, for us, we were the right place, right time, strategy on point. And to be fair, we was unlucky in qualifying in the sense that we had a quick car. I just couldn't show it. And we come home P5 in the opener. Grazie, ragazzi. Forza, Ferrari. Grande lavoro. Grande strategia. Grazie. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they secured here. Right, so here we have the final results then for the first race in Season 3 for the Australian Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton wins ahead of Sergio Perez and Sebastian Vettel. The top three covered by one second. Extremely close and very, very strong pace between those three. Lucas Weber P4, 23 seconds off the lead. And we come home P5, 35 seconds off the lead. But crucially, picking up the fastest lap of the race with that inverted strategy with the mediums onto the softs. And uh, we've managed to beat both Mercedes in the form of Pierre Gasly, Devon Butler. Daniel Ricciardo holds on to P8 and actually kept Raikkonen and Magnussen behind the entire final stint. So double points finished for us in uh, Season 3. Very good way to start off the season and uh, you know bounce back from a very 
tricky end to the end of the season to a very poor car. And uh, yeah, signs misses out on the points along with Stroll, Bottas, Russell, Verstappen, Albon, Giovinazzi and Kafiat with Leclerc and Norris retiring from the Grand Prix. In terms of what that race is going to mean for the standings after one race, of course the drivers is going to stay exactly the same as the race finish. But in terms of the constructors, we are third behind Renault and Red Bull and one point ahead of Mercedes. So crucially, the fast up of the race paying dividends and uh, proving to be the difference as we managed to get ahead of Mercedes by one point after the first race. But overall, guys, a very decent opener here today out of Australia. We're now going to move into the laptop and put some upgrades on. Let's do it. There wasn't much between you and Lucas by the finish today. Do you think you were lucky not to end your race with that crash? Well, thanks anyway. Okay, so here we are then on the laptop and I'm going to do some upgrades already. We've got 1,500 points to spend and there's a lots, of, lots of different options and ways we can go with this, but there is one clear path and something I need to upgrade straight away and um, it's the chassis. The chassis needs work and we do need to upgrade. We've got two minor ones available, which I could do both right now, but there is an upgrade I actually want to do more than this. Even though this is more of a necessity, I feel like the upgrade I'm going to do makes a lot more sense in terms of the track calendar. Now, um, if you look at the power unit, we made a lot of progress recently and um, we gained a lot of time, you know, making these three major ones here, which has unlocked both of the trees, both bottom and top. Now, um, there's two ultimate ones available. This one here, you can see um, 1,470 points. If I just quickly uh, back out so we get the actual performance chart on screen, there you go. You can see how much we gain. We actually gain very, very close amounts to Williams. We're going to be right behind them, but... There's another ultimate one available here. So if I just go down here, there we go, there we go. Now you can see the actual uh, true representation. We're very close to Williams, literally bring down the neck. But this ultimate one actually would bring us above Williams. It gives us more performance for the same price. And we can just afford it. It would take three weeks and it would arrive for Baku, which is perfect timing. So we're going to go for this one here and get down the car for Baku. And that should overtake Williams in terms of power unit. And that should really bring us, you know, to the top half of the table in terms of upper echelon engine performance. And um, that's and also help us out in terms of the R&D boost we should go very very close dare I say maybe even overtake Mercedes once that upgrade arrives and I think because of the cheap the, the the cheaper cost of the upgrades with the investment we made at the end of last season we should be able to I think in the next episode buy at least one of these two chassis upgrades if not maybe both of them depending if we get any contract bonuses so well uh, yeah we're going to definitely invest in that in the next episode guys so do stay tuned for that one but guys already investing in the car putting upgrades on straight away and hopefully we can keep on pushing forward this season and have a very strong car come the end of the season but guys that is it for this episode if you did enjoy it drop a like on the video and also get subscribed if you are new for daily Formula 1 content and also turn on that notifications so don't miss any videos from me and finally check out these two videos on your, on your screen if you have missed them but guys that is it for this episode and i'll see you in my next one very soon but until then it's goodbye from me